Earlier this year, Mayor Kirk Watson requested support from DPS to help make up for Austin's police staffing shortages. It lasted a few months, and then in July, Mayor Watson announced the end of the partnership. One major concern from some council members, the accusation that DPS unfairly targeted black and brown communities. In response to the city's suspension, DPS announced that it would still keep patrolling in Austin as outlined in that partnership. A new report from the New York Times gives us some insight now from the streets of Austin on trooper patrols. And Jay David Goodman is the reporter on that story. He joins us this afternoon. David, thanks so much for being here. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me. So you spent the night in Austin with state troopers who were conducting vehicle stops. Can you just break down to us what you saw? Sure. Uh, this was, um, you know, a pretty routine uh, patrol. It was a Tuesday evening. Um, and what, uh, you know, what they're doing out there, these uh, uh, highway troopers, is, um, you know, pulling over uh, folks for traffic infractions. They're running registrations on uh, license plates that they see that they uh, have some uh, reason to believe uh, may uh, either be expired or, or have some kind of uh, problem with the car. Uh, this is a lot of sort of discretionary police work of the sort that um, really wasn't being done in Austin and in some cases hasn't been done um, in major cities in recent years. It's a kind of older style of policing that really looks to use sort of low level infractions and, and traffic crimes as a way to uh, combat violent crime. These DPS officers are there not to fight, um, you know, uh, people who fail to yield in traffic, but they're there really to address violent crime, but they're using the traffic code to have interactions with people and hopefully run into, they say, the criminals that they believe are out there and the ones that are responsible for the crime. Now, you spoke with officials and community leaders and even some people who were pulled over. What stood out the most when you talked to them about troopers? It really was this way in which they seem to be bringing back this kind of older style of policing. So in Austin, you know, I spoke to um, some of the reform advocates in the city and they, you know, had reluctantly conceded that um, they'd been getting some traction with uh, the Austin Police Department, that the police department, you know, had seemed open to listening to their concerns. There had been changes at the police academy that they seemed to be moving in a direction of, of listening to the community and sort of engaging with the concerns about over policing. And uh, what they said is that then DPS came in and essentially all of that was thrown out the window, that they didn't have any relationship uh, with the um, police department and, and didn't have way, any way of interacting uh, and, and sort of having those, um, their concerns be heard. Um, when it comes to the people that are pulled over, I think a lot of times they're surprised uh, that they're being pulled over by a, a, a state trooper in the middle of the city. Um, you know, some people were happy uh, to see them out. They weren't, you know, concerned about it if, you know, they were just getting a ticket for a minor infraction. Um, but other folks, uh, you know, I spoke to one man who was, you know, said that he was uh, searched in an invasive manner, um, you know, after the uh, officers said they saw some drug paraphernalia in his car. The officers didn't find anything, but he was left kind of, uh, you know, scarred by that experience. And so I think there are these um, interactions that are happening, you know, daily now in Austin uh, that really weren't happening before DPS was out there and certainly have been continuing despite the uh, partnership ending. And then you looked at policing in America just as a whole. What are you seeing in other cities across the U.S.? Are you seeing common themes there? Well, I think one of the things that this partnership was really aimed at, as you mentioned earlier, was, you know, it was meant to sort of help this issue that's happening in other cities as well, which is that, you know, every police department, or most anyway, are having issues recruiting and retaining uh, officers. And so there are shortages, you know, from L.A. to to New York City in terms of uh, the number of, of sworn officers that they can hire. Uh, and so you have different departments competing for officers. And Austin is no different than that. And in fact, has had a real you know, challenge in trying to, to recruit those officers. Um, I think what you're seeing, though, in, in, um, in Texas right now is that um, you know, DPS is increasingly sort of offering itself up as a uh, kind of way to bridge that, um, that gap in terms of staffing. And so you've seen already now uh, you know, a mayoral candidate in Houston, uh, John Whitmire, the state senator, is saying, hey, I'd like to have some state troopers come to, to Houston to help us out with um, staffing shortages that we have in that city. And so I think, you know, there's this way that people are looking to, to state troopers as a way of, of bridging these gaps, but they don't have the connections to the communities. And I think that's, uh, reform advocates would say, that's actually endangering some of these, um, you know, uh, steps that they've taken to try and change the way people are policing in different communities. And then lastly, did you hear anything from DPS in regards to some of the things that you found out in your report? Yeah, I mean, it was interesting, actually. You know, they, I brought to them this instance of a man who said, you know, he was essentially um, had a very invasive search around his crotch during uh, this traffic stop. Uh, you know, I spoke to them about it. They um, shared with me a brief snippet of the um, body camera footage from that stop. 
and said essentially that's routine. And you know, I think from their perspective, that's the way they want uh, their troopers to be policing, to be very proactive, to be looking for uh, you know possible criminality. Um, but from the perspective of this uh, you know resident, that seemed you know way too far and further than he'd um, experienced in the past. And so I think there's a bit of a disconnect there. I think some of the stuff um, that I brought to their attention, they'd say that's what we want our officers to be doing. Okay, J. David Goodman from the New York Times, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thanks so much.